Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. This Week in Startups is brought to you by Igloo, an internet you'll actually like. Visit igloosoftware.com slash thisweekend for a chance to win a $150 iTunes gift card. And by GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting using promo code START to begin your free trial. Today on This Week in Startups, the internet legend and documentary subject, Josh Harris of Sudo.com. We live in public and Jupiter Communication Frame. Stick with us. It's going to be a fascinating episode. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't going to live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't going to live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of This Week in Startups. Episode number, who knows, whatever. There's a couple hundred of them now. I am your host, Jason Calacanis. And what do we talk about in this program? Well, it's called This Week in Startups. So we talk about what's happening with startup companies. And one of the things we like to do is have um, famous internet entrepreneurs on the program. Today, we have one of the most famous, Joshua Harris of the famed Pseudo.com, the New York startup, which essentially started podcasting before the term podcasting even existed, started web TV, and created a lot of the concepts around reality television. If you've seen the documentary film, documentary film by Andy Timoner, We Live in Public, Josh was obviously the subject of that film. Also, he created Jupiter Communications, which was um, one of the most well-respected uh, research firms in the history of the technology industry, which went public. Uh, and famously made him uh, a very wealthy man for a period of time. And we're going to hear all those stories um, today on the program. It's going to be, there's a, there's a lot of laughing, because you know what? As my history. father would say, yeah. if you laugh, if you cry, what do we say? Uh, if you laugh, your life's a comedy, and if you cry, it's a tragedy. We can only laugh about these things at this point. It's been so long. Uh, but actually, Josh gave me my uh, start in podcasting uh, when I did his radio show on WEBD in the uh, 1995, 94 time frame, I think. Uh, we'll get into all that great history. But before we do, I want to let you know about my uh, favorite sponsor, which is GoToMeeting. Go is it GoToMeeting, or am I doing Igwe first? Candace, Brandis. Go I'm all over the place. Citrix, GoToMeeting. Um, go to meeting by Citrix. Citrix meeting is believing. I do all my meetings on GoToMeeting. You guys know that they've been with me for years now uh, as a partner here, but even more years as a customer. I use the product on a daily basis, almost some days two or three times a day. Literally just got off the call with an angel and uh, potential angel investment, building a really cool product, um, and he was just showing me features, and it was very fluid. And he decided to my assistant for whatever reason decided to dial in on my desktop phone. I could have used my speakerphone on my, my VoIP speakerphone, but anyway, he dialed it on that. I didn't even realize I wasn't over the internet. It was so crystal clear. Then I'm on video. He's on video, HD video faces. It works perfectly. Any platform. You can use Android, iOS, desktop, Mac, PC. It just works, and you can try it free by going to GoToMeeting and um, click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code START for your free 30-day trial. Have you, have you noticed, though, like when you do the audio, mm -hmm. it's so optimized for quality that it doesn't sound like a phone call. It sounds like they're more like they're there in the room. It's interesting you mentioned that, Tyler. I did notice that, actually. It doesn't even sound like a phone call. It sounds better it's than It's like a phone optimized call. for Listen, they're not, meetings, not for It's not like some free fly-by-night service yeah. where you get what you pay for. This is dedicated service, dedicated bandwidth, dedicated software, and one click, the software is installed, and it just works. That's why I love it. That's why I've been using it. What was that camera shot? Holy Jesus. Show me that big camera shot. What is that? Whoa, where's that camera? Where's that camera? Is there some tall camera that I don't know about? Is that this camera? Hidden cameras. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah. It's that one? No. I want a big, put a camera up in the corner so I can get the whole shot of the studio somewhere at some point. Uh, and use GoToMeeting for it. Hey, there you go. Anyway, thank you, Citrix GoToMeeting. Meeting is believing. Go and use the promo code START for your free 30-day trial. Um, 
1994, I was an aspiring entrepreneur at the age of 23. Uh, much, like, much like many of the people that are listening to the show. You really interrupt me yeah, during this. I really, really I'm sure. I'm you just out for of context. Studio. I'm kicking you out of the studio. Go ahead. I'm doing a loving, warm intro here. I'm just trying to say. You, I'm calling you Mr. Interrupter now, Tyler. Okay. Zip it. Let me do my thing. I'm start over. <clears throat> It was a warm and in stormy 1993. night. In 1993, I was a, a 94 probably. I was a 23 year old kid writing a column for Paper Magazine in New York City called The Cyber Surfer about the internet. Nobody knew what the internet was at the time. The browser was called Mosaic, and the number one entrepreneur in New York City who knew about the internet was a guy named Josh Harris. I sought him out. He gave me a lot of advice on how to run a company, in fact, taught me the ropes. And he put me on radio for the first time on WEVD, AM radio. And I believe it was Sunday nights. Was that right? I think it was Sunday nights. Yeah, every week. Every week. Right after the Nick game when we could, because we'd, yeah. we'd get the audience. Yeah, you get the audience over the Nick game from WEVD. And then tell me the concept in 1994 or 5 when you did WEVD. What was the concept there? Because you, you were working with Prodigy and you had chat rooms. Explain the concept. Well, at the time, we knew, we, actually, we, streaming hadn't come online. Glazer hadn't invented uh, real media yet. There was no streaming audio on the internet? There was. Actually, on Prodigy, there was. It was just not very well done. You couldn't it was re there. realistically stream live radio? You could, uh, sort of. It just it wasn't didn't work very, at 14 it, it wasn't smooth, let's face it. Yeah, it would, it would buffer for 30 seconds and stop. It was not like it is today where you get HD streaming over the internet. So we started with the radio show and sort of waited for somebody to come out with streaming. And the minute that Glazer came out with, from Real Media came out with it, we deployed it and built our own studios. Right. But at that time, you were experimenting. Your minimal viable product was renting studio time at a local AM station, and then you had chatters in the chat room on Prodigy who were paying 3 or $4 an hour to chat at that time. Almost yeah, actually, our viable product was running chat on Prodigy, which we were getting 15 points on $2.35 an hour. We were so you're making we, 35 cents or something. Yeah, we were doing 80% of their total independent traffic and 40% of their complete traffic within a year. And people were paying 2 dollars and change to be on Prodigy yeah. per hour. Until Steve Case came along and creamed them. And said AOL, AOL was going to be... Flat rate pricing, $5. They, what the, the beauty of it was they'd advertise on Prodigy. They let, Prodigy allowed AOL to advertise on on their service, and <gasps> so they cannibalized all wow. their customers. That was crazy, crazy decision. But I remember being in the studio back then in 1994 or 5, and it was a mind-boggling experience to see people in a chat room who were responding to what you were saying on the radio. How did you come up with that idea? Um, wow, that's a good question. I guess I, I've... I, you I realize it had never just, been done. It had never been done, and it seemed like the logical thing to do. And that's really... Once we started doing the, uh, the chat video on Prodigy, yeah. um, it just... It, then, it, then, actually, since that time, I've been driving toward that problem. That's what, I mean, literally it's yeah. from, it's been... 20 years, almost, yeah, going on 20. Almost going 20 years, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, if nothing else, I'm a uh, persistent son of a gun. You are a persistent son of a bitch, that's right. Uh, um, uh, uh, no, I, I don't know, son of a bitch, uh, is that a curse word or no? I don't think so, okay. no, it has to be okay. like one of the seven dirty words. So this is the MCC, Mahalo, you know, commission? No, no, this, this commission here is, um, this goes, this money goes to um, paying for a keg. And when we hit like 100 bucks or 200 bucks, we buy a keg for the team. We have a kegger. Um, so you have that chat room and you're experimenting. But then Rob Glazer comes out with streaming audio. And you build a studio very similar to the one that's here. In fact, this weekend is a complete ripoff of what you did at Studio. Well, actually, it's there. a complete ripoff of, your own, of yourself because you were doing Silicon Alley Reporter. And that's correct. Uh, uh, and I have to say, the uh, I, I should I, maybe uh, maybe we can uh, dub in the soundtrack. I'll give you the soundtracks later. Yeah. But uh, the intros and outros for uh, for uh, Silicon Alley Reporter were are Fantastic. still fabulous. Yeah. Still. You're fabulous. listening to the Silicon Alley Reporter. If people don't know, Silicon Alley Reporter was the magazine that created in 1995, 96 time frame, and we did a show which was audio initially. But then one day we came into the studio and we actually had video. We have the video, yeah. yeah. So we, we transitioned as soon as Rob came out with the video. We transitioned to the video component. 
and within the programming, the idea the idea is this. Then is the same now. You, uh, the creation of very low cost programming that incorporates the audience. Hmm. The audience, in best case scenario, the audience is the show guided by the the host, which. Back then, it had to be in studio, but nowadays uh, it can be done from people's home, mobile, or office studios. And this entire um, expedition uh, led to raising venture capital and building what most people consider the next big IPO, the next big company in Silicon Alley in the internet space. Yeah, we had Intel, LVMH, uh, Tribune Company. And, uh, LVMH, the handbag maker, the Chanel, handbag and maker. everything. Yeah, or no. Or no. Yeah. So you raised ten, twenty million dollars for this vision. Eighteen million dollars, but we actually. And this was at ninety nine or ninety. This was ninety ninety eight. Actually, the C, the the cadence went. We generated. Prodigy ended up buying us out. So all told, we generated almost five million dollars in free capital from them. Mm -hmm. um, then we raised five million in angel capital. Mm -hmm. Then we raised eighteen million dollars in venture ca true venture capital Series A. So twenty eight million dollars. Twenty eight million dollars. The, the only caveat on that last 18 was that they made me displace myself as CEO, and we brought in David Borman eventually, right. who now runs Current TV. Who runs Current TV now. Yeah. Um, and that they, they should have never let me off the hook. They should have kept you in. Yeah, definitely. And it would have worked out, you think? Well, well, do you think you could have ever? Do you think the business was way too early? The idea of streaming media and talk shows, because right, I mean, it's barely working now. Let's be honest. So let, let I me. Mean, I've got it working here in a sort of well, small let, way. Let me put it to you, Jason. Yeah, put it. So to here's me. the question. Yeah. And okay, this is you. Ha I if you if you if you BS me, which doesn't count in the jar. And doesn't count. If you BS me, I'll know. If I figure into it. Yeah. No okay. cold sugar. So. It's 1999. Mm -hmm. Let's, for argument, say I'm running the company, Pseudo Programs Inc. Sure. You're Yahoo. Right. You're going to invest a billion dollars in the cloud, what I now call the cloud casting field or net casting field or whatever. Sure. So your choice, the smart move in, in 2020 hindsight, your choice is Josh Harris or Mark Cuban. You're Yahoo. And now we're, now we're 10, 15 years later. Well, <laughs> Mark, I, I would say, you know, right, so the timing this is... is the MarkRanBroadcaster.com. And Mark, Mark ran AudioNet, which became Broadcast.com. Yeah. And famously sold for $5 billion. And people considered you guys contemporaries. You yeah. were building content. He was providing services it, and it was a we, One was a production platform play, and one guy was selling sales. Because that's well, really the Well, he was selling product. infrastructure is what he was selling. In, what was the infrastructure? Um... Studios, he had no uh, studios. streaming space. No, some. yeah, but not really. They would send production facilities, right? They would. But they would that send wasn't production. that wasn't the, what they were selling. They had a sales force that was selling to brands to that were paying them. them money because they didn't know what was going on. So let me put it to you now. Yeah, your Yahoo. Right. Now, twenty twenty. Which vision would I pick? I would. I would have picked your vision. For if you imagine, imagine if they'd pumped a billion dollars into into doing into original programming, hundred million dollars a year. Well, by the way, YouTube is pumping hundreds of millions of dollars into original program as we speak, including one of my companies, Mahalo.com. Yeah, yeah, but uh, okay, well. So we'll yeah, YouTube there. essentially is doing what you are, what you just explained. But again, if Yahoo had been doing it persistently and with with a good production team out of New I think New York, Yahoo would be YouTube ten years before YouTube existed. Right. No, no, five years before YouTube. So, the, so at the time, the, pr the real problem came down to the fact that the logical decision was not the correct decision. The correct decision at the time was what Mark Cuban did was to... Was to have to $25 million in revenue a quarter. He sold the revenues. Right. He didn't sell the product. Correct. Yeah. Right. And they bought that because they were getting multiples on their stock, not because it was strategically valuable to the company. Yeah, that would be the... Yes, that's why they made that decision. It, it yeah. made more sense to Wall Street, which was acting irrationally at the time. But there was value there in terms of the $100 million in revenue yeah, they're so, making per year. So from a pr pragmatic standpoint, I did yeah. the right thing, but not from the market standpoint. And what, what do you think... And by the way, I, let me just say for the at record... At the time also, how much yeah. were you paying for bandwidth, by the way? Because the bandwidth was a huge portion how about, of how the about, cost. How about, like, I remember paying for this, just before we even get to the bandwidth... Yeah. Let's just get to the, the cost just for of the doing podcasting. Of, remember, you have to store the net. Yes, the I streams. remember storage. By the way, we didn't call it podcasting. We called it net casting. Net casting, yeah, internet casting. And if you recall, we had a sign that said not on air, but rather on net. 
Right. So we were using the sort of sort of looking at the industrial jargon even back there. Yeah, and it actually is like people still to this day don't know what to call what we do here. They say it's a podcast. I think it's but I think it's cloud casting. I think that's the more elegant version. So I'm going to go with cloud casting. I don't know if it'll stick in the industry, yeah. but. Uh, okay, so let me just just because you, last Walk night the talk. last night the, you uh, showed me a chip with how many gigs on it? 128 gigs. So that th that and that's a hundred bucks. That I was wrote, an SD card. I wrote a check for a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for for a sixty gigs worth sixty gigs worth of storage. Wow. So uh, so the bandwidth you know and the bandwidth was concomitant. Right. So it was, but that really wasn't the the real thing. The the, the real we were, you know, we went into industrial production. We At had, a time when the advertisers just didn't understand what you were doing. Yeah, well, that and the you fact there was, there was no, the, the play was to be in it to win it, mm -hmm. which is sort of how my pattern with, and I did that with Jupiter. I, I wasn't doing Jupiter in 19, I started Jupiter in 1986. How, why did you start Jupiter? What was that exactly? How so I could start? do what I'm doing now. It was all, I'm all, I'm in a fairly, Fairly strict and forward vector toward. Well, explain to the audience what Jupiter was and why did you start it? Um, Plain English. Well, I, first of all, just so my background, I did. Yeah. Uh, I went to the Annenberg School of Communications at USC for graduate school. U UC San Diego for undergrad, both in communications. Got a job in Bethesda for the for a newsletter back when you could make money with newsletters yep. called International Video Text Teletext News. International video text, video text, not with a T. Teletext news. Teletext was the thing that they put in the uh, vertical blanking intervals on television, under in the bars that roll. Right. And then if you have a correct reader, it would play. Wow. So that and I worked for CBS making vi teletext for a little bit of time. And what was then, the purpose of teletext? Well, the idea is sort of like uh, like on direct TV, but uh, you know, uh, without the steroids. Got it. So a little bit of information contained in the stream. Yeah, like a, a really SAP. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the it's a subtitling, but yeah, except sure. for information. Got it. Uh, then I worked for international Pat McGovern's International Data Corporation. IDC. I, IDG at IDG the time. IDG at the time. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, uh, as a consultant, uh, consultants in the video text business, I was a senior video text analyst. So you consulting with what companies? The banks, oh. all the major banks, all the major financial institutions. Really? And then, and then, oddly enough, Gateway and Knight Ritter, Gateway, Vutron and Gateway, Knight Ritter and uh, and Times Mirror, mm. who were tr dabbling in in the online medium, and they spent a fair amount of their capital to do it and then gave up on it just before the browser came out. Wow. They, so this is in the early 90s they were this, working on. No, this was in 19, from 1984 through 1988, both time, uh, Times Mirror and uh, Knight Ritter were both, they understood that, that what was going on, they just didn't have the wherewithal, uh, mm -hmm. the DNA to really They couldn't lean into it, it. They couldn't stick with it. It was just too so strange. So you decide you're going to start your own newsletter about... Uh, I quit. One day I, I realized I could do it better. It a long story, but I could do it better. I was kicking ass at IDG. You were considered one of the best analysts. Yeah, the I was in the, at that time I was in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal being quoted fairly regularly. About the coming information revolution. Well, what, Knight Ritter closing down or Vutron, yeah. you know, this or that, or CompuServe or Delphi or the Well, the source, online or, services where you would dial yeah, up to... The dial-ups. The dial-ups. The pay, the pay per hour dial-ups. And right. I knew all the greats in the industry. I had Bill McGowan, who started CompuServe. Right. And Steve Case, before he started uh, PC Link. Yeah. which turned into, or actually went Quantum Link, which was a Commodore-only service. Then, then he went to the PC Link, and then he uh, uh, combined the, the enterprise into um, a company called AOL. America Online. Yeah, and I basically... Uh, covered him on the way up. Well, I covered him on the way up, and um, yeah, we got into it a lot because I started writing about AOL and what they were doing well. The, mm. He's the best executive I ever... In that era, he was clearly the he best executive. He was the top guy. He was, he was the stud. Execution-wise. So but you start Jupiter Communication... But he I started writing the research reports, for example, explaining how, how he was cleaning Prodigy's clock. Mm. And that, and then, of course, prodig the Prodigy reports one and two, which is sort of how I got the contract to do Prodigy so you chat. So you started Jupiter Communication just by starting a storefront? 
Oh, getting an office out of I your apartment? I took an office, and then the first thing I did was uh, I had a, I built my, my mailing list, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the usual. Then I started a newsletter. A physical letter. mailing list. It, well, on a computer, but yeah. But you would print out labels and say, I have a report coming out. Fill well, up this form. The first thing was the newsletter, which was um, uh, Connect Times. Connect Times. And all I did was get on all the chat rooms and all the message boards and, and have people count. I tried using, like, to do the counting because there was no sound. I tried, you know, to save money. I tried the deaf community. Yeah. No, that wasn't, didn't work. So wait, so how, wait, what do you mean? You have people count <laughs> how many people in the room? counting. Yeah, they go in and count, you know, at 8 o'clock at night on all five services. They count, count how many people were in the chat rooms. How many people were, how many messages were left and how, how many. Uh, Got you it. Know. So you would be able to tell the activity on computer yeah. prodigy, et cetera. Right, which none of my competitors were doing. Wow. And then I did. Then I started making research reports, mm -hmm. and then I did a set of research reports, and then uh, the third piece in the puzzle was, of course, conferences. Right. And the reason I was able to beat the Gulf War, which is when all my little competitors went out, was because I had a balanced attack. So when you had, when the Gulf War happened in 93? 90. 90. Which, by the way, is what, what happened? It just well, all you, know of what, you know what really happened? It was the best thing that ever happened to Jupiter because. The day before the Gulf War broke out, in the New York Times, I'm quoted prominently explaining how CNN, these newfangled news services like CNN, which was a news service out of Atlanta, new, are able to cover war, and the online services are able to cover war better than the television networks per se. And the next day, Bernard Shaw was in front of a satellite TV. CNN blew up. And then two weeks later, Lou Dobbs had me in his office, him smoking a cigarette, me with my cigar in my mouth, looking at each other like, like, like wow, who's a bigger stud? He was right. bigger than me. Well, that was a big deal. That was what made CNN was the Gulf War. Because well, they, there was, you turn on ABC or CBS, they might break into coverage of Hill Street Blues to show five minutes of something or tell you that something's coming at 11. But CNN covered it around the clock. And they got it right. And they did a good job. And they were, and they were at that early stage where they were, were tough. I'm going to play the trailer for We Live in Public um, in a moment, and then we're going to come back and talk about the rest of your amazing story. This is going to be an amazing hour with Josh Harris here. Let me tell you about a great piece of software and a great new partner we have here at This Week in Startups. It's called Igloo. And Igloo is an intranet that you'll actually like and you'll actually use. And we started using it here, and it has been transformative to our business. And again, we only take products and services that we really love and use and Igloo was introduced to us. We started playing with it. You know, we turned down like three or four out of five people who want to partner with us on the program. But we said to this, like, this is actually something we need. So here it is. We use Igloo inside the company. And we do things like put all of our sponsors into our intranet. And so there is MailChimp and Igloo and New Relic. And, oh, I'm supposed to not see New Relic. That's a new sponsor coming up. Forget about that. Hiscox, all the Snap Terms. Oh, that's another sponsor you're not supposed to know about. Jeez, we're crushing it on sponsorships. Go, Jason DeMont. Anyway, um, here, if you click on the Igloo software um, folder on our intranet, the Igloo fo software team has access to this, and we're putting in all the pre-rolls and all the logos and all that stuff that we need. Then we put the calendar in here. Then I have my team debating inside the intranet, like what we're going to do for the show and who's on the show and who do we think should be on the show and what's going on. It's basically like our private conversation. And then uh, here you can see another company, uh, Wugspace, for this IT management, and they're doing surveys of their employees and how two articles like wikis and they have forums and they're really pulling together in a wiki uh, and in a message board format and sharing files and it's an extra net as well. It's like all the great features and it's so easy to use. We got it literally set up in minutes here. Um, it's the internet you're really going to want to use um, and we've been having a great time with it. And here's a great thing. You may have seen today, um, I don't even know what today's date is. I think it's October or something. Anyway, point is, the iPad mini came out today. And Igloo is going to give one of those away for free. Uh, go to igloosoftware.com slash this weekend. Igloo.com. Igloo software, sorry. Igloosoftware.com slash this weekend. Igloo software, I G L O O S O F T. We can ask about software. Dot com slash this weekend. And you will see, I'm here for, I'm just here for the free iPad mini. They get it. They know you might just want to get the free mini. You go, you sign up, you try it, you win the iPad mini. And I bet you your chances are going to be pretty good. Um, so go there and win one of those iPad minis and get a 30-day free trial. Other big companies use them, by the way. You may have heard of this one, Deloitte. <laughs> NetApp, huge. BlackBerry, huge. Hospice, IDC. They've got a lot of great, huge companies using their product. And the product is fully hosted and managed 
in the cloud with a secure business, uh, you know, very secure for business. I mean, they understand they're in business. This is really important information to keep secure. And listen, if you really love this program, you love the Saka interview, you love the David Henmeyer Hansen interview, you love having Michael Robertson on the program, if you appreciate what we're doing here and how my team is literally busting their ass, I mean, trust me, you do not want to work for a guy like me because, I mean, you hear the insanity in the pre-show when I'm like, dressing people down and yelling at them, oh my God, we gotta make the audio better. Oh my God, we gotta get better guests. Oh my God, we gotta get the better cameras. I'm going crazy trying to make the show better. And that requires partners. And I don't charge for this program. I mean, you're not paying for this. And this is like getting an MBA. Every week I get a new MBA listening to these great founders and entrepreneurs. And it takes partners like Igloo Software. And so it is your geary, it is your humble duty to go ahead and thank Igloo Software. Thank, thank you at Igloo Software on your Twitter account. Go ahead and go to um, igloosoftware.com slash thisweekend.com. When we left our hero, Josh Harris, he uh, was telling us about... CNN. CNN and in Lou the early Bob's. days. When, um, Lou was, when Lou was at, the, at, the, at, the, at his at his The zenith. height of his career. Yeah. He was at the zenith, yeah. And he was doing incredible. Um, and pseudo... Well, that actually, that got us... That got us, that popped us on CNN. We were regulars there. That got us to regulars on the Wall Street Journal. And then the internet happened in 93, 94, 95. When when Case went public, that's when it happened. And that's when, that's how we popped the Jupiter brand. And Jupiter uh, would host all the internet conferences in New York. I went to them and obviously copied them when I did Silicon Valley Reporter. So I copied your first company. I then, told Gene to buy Gene DeRose, who was then CEO, know, to buy come, you. I know. What, what happened? Never happened. He uh, couldn't come to terms. Um, Should have. It would have been more money than I made on the sale to Dow Jones. Um, but I did watch you grow that conference business and said, my God, that's a great business. Holy cow. But then you departed that business to go do the prodigy work, but that company went public, and you were a major shareholder. You owned 20% when it went public? 15? A little more. A little more. Twenty five percent of a company like and that. it was worth And I'd already cashed out for a couple million with Gartner Group bought a chunk of it. Yeah. Privately. So f- it went public at five hundred million, a billion, something crazy. I think four hundred million. So you're worth a hundred million on paper. Something like that. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go, easy play, come, easy go. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> Let's play the trailer from We Live in Public. Should I play it in here, Brandis, or do you want to play it in there? Okay. But do you have audio coming out? Yeah? Yes. Okay. And so I don't need to do anything. Here we go. The internet's like this new human experience. Now, do we have At first, to everybody's yeah. going to like it, but there will be a fundamental change in the human condition. And one day, we're all going to wake up and realize that we're just servants. It's captured us. It was genius because nobody had done it yet. He was saying, this is the way it's going to be. And he was right. I mean, he was right. And he was selling companies for a couple million dollars. Well, we were all a bunch of kids getting paid 10 bucks an hour to try and figure out HTML. Josh was one of these incredible new idols everybody suddenly wanted to be. I'm in a race to take CBS out of business. He was always trying to advance the inevitable. This is going to happen. Let's try it now. It is our function as artists to make the spectator see the world our way. People want 15 minutes of fame every day. So we built the bunker and showed them the future. I'm an alligator. I'm a mama, papa coming for you. We're going to record Stasi type of intelligence. The cameras were everywhere. There's cameras set up in the showers and the toilets. Is there anything graphic on the TV? They're eating and having sex in public, and people ate it up. This was one of the most extraordinary activities I've ever attended anywhere in the world. Really, the question starts to become, who is behind us? What's going on? I've joined the call. Everything is free, except the video that we capture of you. That we own. Welcome to We Live in Public. And he said, I want to put 32 cameras in the loft, wire to the internet, and I want us to be the first couple to live in public. It was viewable to the masses. There was the giddy first month. There was all this press and hype, and they're going to conceive in public. Get a porn star and have sex all over the house in public. 
It wasn't just we live in public. He was going down financially. I need to tell you, you got a negative balance in your checking account. Okay, bye. It's all about to come out. Sooner or later, it's all about to come out. I just don't want to give him anything more. Leave now. Out. Josh was the puppet master. I want to know why he's doing business in this manner. All I know is I came downstairs and saw a bunch of people running around naked and shooting firearms. Josh, 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 Josh. Josh. I heard someone tell me that they were rolling around in the pot. Shut up, I'm fucking! It was just a crazy and somewhat dangerous scene because you knew that someone was going to flip out. She grabbed my throat. Six, five, two, Josh, Josh. Josh. Basically, all hell broke loose. He's gonna wind up in jail. Speaking to you virtually is how I know how to do this best. Everything that he does is a precursor to something that is going to happen to all of us. Everything. A few hundred years ago, the lions and tigers were kings of the jungle. And then one day they wound up in zoos. I suspect we're on the same uh, track. Okay, so that was the trailer for We Live in Public, um, the film by Andy Timoner that tells your story. Somewhat accurately, I guess. And somewhat. Somewhat accurately. It feels I, I was there, so I, I felt it was pretty accurate. Truman Show girlfriend or not? Well, let well, me put it to you again. This well, is... let's not jump ahead too okay. far. Okay, okay. Um, so you're worth $100 million. You're doing pseudo. You've raised $18 million. Then the dot-com crash comes. Well, you're jumping, let's, you're, you're jumping ahead of yourself. Okay. So I had the dough. I had a lot of money on paper from between pseudo and Jupiter, which is, was sim simply liquid. Right. So you, I got, I, they made me, uh, the venture capitalists made me displace myself. Right. So now I they had... They kicked you out, a CEO. Well, it was, it, it, was, it, it was your money or your life. Right. Sort of, We're going to yeah. give you, it's your money <laughs> well, that and was your my life. life. Yeah. yeah. Get the money, save your life. Okay, keep going. Okay, so... You have nothing to do. I have nothing. Well, the thing is, is I, they let me off the hook because, you know, I had, uh, now I had... I had, uh, I, I thought to myself, you know, millennium is coming up. The turn of the century. The turn of the millennium. And the millennium. The, no, right. the millennium. The millennium, the, right. There, there's only two so far. Right. Uh, Christian-wise. So, and, you know, and part of the, part of what I'd been doing, I'd been working, you know, sort of the underbelly of lower Manhattan, the, uh, the sort of cultural scene. The art scene in New York was very strong in the 90s. Yeah, and I'd say that both you and I were, were part and parcel of that. It was a fun time. One day I'm walking down the street, and I realize that somebody's got to do, do, do it for the millennium. And then it dawned on me that I had the means and the opportunity to, to so conduct the caper. So you rent a huge storefront? Two, two buildings, two including buildings. Matthew Brady's former, the, the Civil War photographer's former studio right. on Lower Broadway in Chelsea. Yep. Uh, but... It wasn't like I just. It wasn't like we just dropped out of nowhere. I had the whole Williamsburg movement and the whole. The, so you had, had a bunch a, of artists. You build this installation. Art this art project. This was and now this is not a business project. This was not well. As we'll see now, it's, it's turning into one because of the art. No, it's all one mo motion. It's like poker. You know the famous thing about poker. You know. Do you know how to play poker? I forgot. I to played ask. a couple of hands. Well, you know, it's it feels like old, I don't know how to play at this point. Uh, lately, I'm uh, running bad. Yeah, I know. You're kind of going, it's funny how the streaks happen. Oh, boy. Queen three. Here well, we well, come. Queen three suited. So um, it's all one big session, hmm. right? It's all one big session. That's yeah, right. I'm, on the, I'm now ready to, I'm now in the midst of the, of, uh, you know, I'm still in the tournament. Right. And it um, seems like I'm going to stack up. I got a good hand. Good. But anyway, I'm walking down the street at that time, and I'm really realizing somebody's got to do it. And it dawns on me that it's me, because I have means and opportunity. And the most important thing on the clip that you just saw, what relative to things, was you know the director of the Museum of Modern Art in New York mm -hmm. saying that... This was saying, the most important event she'd ever been to. Yeah, she knew it when she saw it. Now, wait a second. The name of this installation or project was? Quiet. Because in order to hear the universal vibrations, you need quiet. 
and We Live in Public was another project but got associated with Quiet. It got associated due to the film, yes. Due to the film. Okay, so Quiet is what? In modern day terms or at the time? At the time, if you were to explain to somebody what you were doing, what would you have said? It was the culmination of uh, an art movement. Got it. And, so and how, did that, how did that manifest itself? Well, the, the, the denouement of it was, a, you know, a, it put me in the, you know, in square in the line of sight of the Museum of Modern Art, which is the finest, finest museum of, of contemporary art in the whole world. And the, for all of you, you know, established entrepreneurs, you know, I, I made, you know, I, I started from scratch. I bootstrapped it from the yeah. streets of New York with my bare knuckles, wound up, you know, making a respectable amount of money. A hundred million. A hundred million bucks. Could have cashed, mm. all that. Thing is, that's not, you know, the, the making, the, making uh, that kind of impact with the Museum of Modern Art is much more difficult. Mm. So there so was that's part and part. We parcel. still haven't established what quiet is. You invite a bunch of artists to build a commune, a well, bunker. Explain what it was. Well, let me put it in modern day terms because that's okay. why I built it. I mean, okay. you know, I'm building Netband Command. That's the that's the uh, okay. that's what I'm working on now. Well, if you think of it in terms of that, it's really uh, part of my sound stage. It's where people live and entertain themselves and eat and do their ablutions which is eight hours a day out of 24. So you had how many people living in this? There were 100 uh, available capsules in the capsule hotel, plus, plus uh, um, anybody really could get in that, that knew to be there yeah. and hang out. So there are 100 bunk beds, essentially. But these capsules have in them cameras. They were completely wired, cameras and microphones. and Not internet cameras, though. They they were, it was a closed circuit. Closed circuit. So that you we basically were built a cable ne network. I be, well, actually, I literally bought a cable network uh, 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 colo thing. I like bought, a whole infrastructure. Like I literally, we literally How much went. How that cost? The, the actual hardware was $80,000. Yeah. So you built this whole like rack and had cameras everywhere. And Which I could you, now do for about $100. Right. While you're in each of these bunkers, in the bunks, you could change channels and watch the other people's bunks. Anywhere, not only the other bunks, but anywhere the throughout bathroom. the facility, the bathrooms or whatnot. And then, in addition to people living there and watching each other sleep, have sex or whatever, or take a shower, we there had, was, for example, an interrogation room. There was an interrogation room, uh, of a which, church. By the way, just let's stick one at a time. Interrogation room, I hired a, a former CIA, CIA interrogation expert. Right. And we, uh, we gave every entrant the Minnesota aptitude test, psychological, I forgot the name of it, yeah, but yeah. The, the, that test, famous test. Right. So that, you know, because, you know, you, being in New York, they'd all, they'd, all the people showing up at these things thought they'd seen everything. Yeah. And we figured, well, we're going to take them so to the So you give them place. a test, a psychological test to profile them. Then he grills them like he's a Stasi member. Yes. In a white room. I remember it like a two-way mirror room. So we had cameras on two the other Two-way mirror side. room. So anybody can watch. Well, only the peep, only the uh, Stasi. Only Stasi. We didn't so, call it Stasi, but you know. But they're interrogating people like it's a criminal interrogation. It was for business. What do you mean? It was for business. We weren't fooling around. We were get, we were going to get whatever they had. We but were, we got out of them. People were freaking out during some of these. Yeah, well, people freak we out. Cracked and some people. We during that was the game. We were there to crack you. Then there was a church. The uh, yeah, that's the uh, Church of Arcadia. So there was a church, and you would get up there and give sermons. Or I actually did it. We built part of the reason for building the church was to give the lions and tigers in the jungle speech, which you see in the in the trailer, because it's the whole idea that um, it's which is which back then was novel. But as we as we're sitting here today in 2012, we are becoming you know the what we eat the animal we were becoming animals in cages, and and redundant to the Andy's to the cloud. take on that in the film was the director's take is. This is Facebook. This is social media. People now are recording everything they do. They're sharing every detail of their life. You, in 1999, were forcing people to do it as part of entrance. Who were not now, psych psychologically prepared for that at And that time. who were not psychologically prepared for it at the time. Today, if you did this with people, it would be a cakewalk because they're doing it themselves anyway. Except that now, with NetBand Command... Hmm. Um, the new project. Yeah, I think I found the sweet spot timing-wise. Okay. 
We're going to get to that. I know, but that that's the modern... I'm, what I'm building now is a modern day mind blow of what I did back then. Then there was a big common place to eat food, and then there was a gun range. The machine gun. There was also a torture chamber. I never made it. To the it well, because it was it was uh, the torture chamber was created created by a, an artist who specialized in torture chambers. I never saw that. It wasn't and Alfredo Mart. Well, if it, I guess then it didn't exist. Ah. But no, there was, and then the, the machine gun range, of course. Right. Uh, it, can you imagine a having... A machine gun range in Manhattan. In, like, literally within spitting distance of Police Plaza 1. Police Plaza 1 was a catty corner to the location. Yes. Um, right by Duane Street. Um, I don't think it would fly at the moment. No, but there was big discussion of the millennium was the time when the terrorists were going to attack New York and Times Square specifically, and they had busted people going to Seattle with bombs. People yeah, don't remember 200,000 body bags in New York City. There were body bags in New York. They were ready for a terrorist attack. There would have been very credible threats of a terrorist attack. And in fact, there were people who had come through Canada to try to interrupt a uh, millennial celebration in Seattle. So and that's the context in which you had people firing guns. And so this leads me to say, did you go crazy at that time? Were you no. out of your mind on drugs? No. no. I, first of all, I don't really, you know, I don't really drink yeah. or... Yeah. Smoke once in a while, but I don't really okay. do much. So the, but people did perceive that you I, were losing it at that point. No, time. no. It was we live in public. Okay, so that's we what, live in public is when people me. thought that you got cracked. Well, no, they're not that they thought. In fact... But you were cracked. Actually, let's, 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 let's talk about you and me because... Okay. I would rather keep talking about you, but well, okay. Well, it's, it's related. Okay. I mean, all along, you've been my muse. And in well, fact, your muse, I've been a document. I've documented. You're in your, the book. You're in the movie. And well, more, we were very good friends during that time. Yeah. You were a mentor to me. Well, to me, true. But you you make a good muse. Okay. So and let me give you the the uh, proof of concept. Okay. There was a day, the day when I when I absolutely knew I'd lost it from yes. We Live in Public. I remember. I had two choices: your office or Gene DeRose's office. Oh really? Yes. You pick mine. Yeah, because you're a better muse. Got no it. offense, Gene, but let's face yeah. it. Um, we'll tell that story in a minute. Okay. So was, we're skipping over We Live in Public. So um, the event was crazy. I went there a couple times to check it out. I did not check in. I, you tried to get me to come join. I didn't want to join because I thought it was insane. I was right. i um, glad I didn't in a way. Do you, are, um, is that really true? Because you imagine if that's how you'd spent your millennium now. Well, you maybe actually, I, you know, actually when you think about it, yeah, maybe I would have liked to spend a little more time there. Maybe the, I wasn't there for the millennium. I was there. Test out a pod, see what it, get the feel of it. You know, I just it, feel like I don't know if I would want to have risked like yeah, anyway. Yeah, but it was a only, little crazy. Only the week of, the week of mine went went that's true. That's true. Yeah. So anyway, the thing goes down. You wind up having a little bit of violence in there, people fighting with each other, actually, but nothing too crazy. Actually, the tr fact of the matter was, by that point, um, I'd thrown enough of these installation events and the people I was working with also sort of had been or were war-torn on these things. It was all under control the whole time with one minor exception, and which, which we didn't allow to get off out of hand. Right. That was David Leslie, uh, and we, there was one, uh, there was, you know, we had the, where you ate looked like heaven, right below it in Matthew Brady's uh, dark room, looked like hell. Mm -hmm. It was designed as hell. Right. And, and David Leslie, the impact addict. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, for yeah, crazy so. New York perf artist. Very, very profound performance artist for, out of PS1, yeah. 22. Right. Yeah, Mark. Uh, so anyway, there were some instances that occurred, people got kicked out, but the thing ended. And it was. It ended by well, yeah. Well, of course, the uh, it got it was it was no actually it was close. I I have to say at the the night before, the night of New Year's Eve, I opened the front windows, uh, using uh, Dwayne Hans's daughter Maya, Alex Arcadia's girlfriend. Um, we created a red light district, and I got um, true supermodels in scantily clad lingerie, swinging on trapezes, red lights, the whole nine yards. Big neon signs, girls, 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 and then another neon sign saying triple X. So just as the security forces were heading to keep New York City out of harm's way, Times Square, they all drove by it. 
for then. I knew they couldn't get me then, but I, in, those, in that day and time, after Giuliani, Giuliani was cracking down on everything. Billy Stopless, if you recall. Billy Stopless was a topless joint that Giuliani shut down? No, he, he, they had to put a top on, so they called it Billy's Top or just Stopless. Stopless. It used to be called Billy's Topless. Topless. It was a famous on the corner of 24th and 6th. That's pretty good, Jason. 24th and 6th. I've never been in it, <laughs> oh, but it yeah, was famous yeah, yeah, because yeah. it had, in the topless, the O was glass, and you, could, you couldn't you could look in, but it was glass, so you thought you could look in, but you could actually only look out. You could sort of peek. You could sort of like try to see in, I guess. It was like tinted glass. But it I was, didn't know that, actually. Yeah, it said yeah, topless, but then he was upset, so they said you have to take the sign down. He said, no, no, it's Billy Stopless now, and he put yes. an S. So, so I knew that they, I knew they, I knew that they, on the way up, they weren't going to be able to get me, but on right. the way down, mm. I knew they were coming. Yeah. And in order to have the greatest party in the history of New York, which according to the Museum of Modern Art, in fact, it was, you have to have the greatest after party. So the after party, the twist on the after party, it wasn't for the residents of the capsule hotel. It was for the security forces because they, you know, they'd already been in there. It'd been on Fox News. It was, yeah. a, it was a soft cops bunker. had come a bunch of times. Yeah, well, the, the FBI, FEMA, the fire department, the white-hatted uh, police, yep. top brass came, and they just saved New York from any harm. And they wanted to blow up some steam. And they hung out for three hours playing with Arnold Schwarzenegger's, you know, Terminator gun because it was a movie. Rent, we were using a movie rental house for the machine guns. Yep. And they had the time of their life. Same guys, the same guys that went into the buildings in 9-11. Yeah. It was their last time maybe that they all got together. Yeah. Um, and then after that, the party ends, and then you decide you're going to do... Well, I, I, well here we go, because I didn't just decide this. Okay, so we'll, we'll cast, get into that. I'd cast uh, my, uh, my okay. Truman Show girlfriend years in advance. Okay, so here is the... Um, and again, you're the proof of that. Here's the We Live in Public. Good evening. It's your sanctuary from the outside world, the most private place in your life, unless you're the couple in our first story tonight. They installed nearly three dozen cameras in their home and put their lives on display over the internet. Every breath, every bite, every move they made. But what began as a daring and very personal experiment became the toughest test their relationship ever faced. Perhaps to no one's surprise but their own, the couple's lives would begin to unravel while thousands of people watched. John Hockenberry visited their very public housing. When he first asked me, I remember very clearly, it was early in the morning, we'd just gotten up, and he said, I want to put 32 cameras in the loft, wire to the internet, and I want us to be the first couple to fully expose ourselves and live in public. It was not exactly the proposal Tanya Corrin's mom prepared her for, but then no mom could ever prepare their daughter for boyfriend Josh Harris. 21st century internet visionary, he founded two multi-million dollar companies. Josh's newest endeavor gives the term going public a whole new meaning. What really mattered to me more than anything was to live in public. And he doesn't mean public as in simply being famous or being rich. 39-year-old Josh's worth was at one time estimated to be $40 million. No, Josh's idea was to turn his life and whoever else walked through it into a live internet TV show. I have 24-7 comprehensive surveillance of my life. And so at a cost of over $2 million, Josh installed 32 cameras in his New York City loft. For 100 days, anyone who logged onto the internet could see free video of every action, every movement, from the really mundane to the mundane, really. But love is not mundane, and Tanya and Josh were about to test their four-year relationship. How would they do? Well, they had already moved in together, and they both loved the internet. I felt that it would be an incredible growing experience, and I thought maybe it would bring us closer together. But Tanya did have some doubts. <laughs> he cares a lot about an awful lot of strange things. And Josh, by his own account, a headstrong artist, did have some wild, some might say peculiar opinions. But no matter, love would conquer all, and we live in public.com was born. You've got a grid up here for lights. You've got... Okay, so you decide you're going to live with Tanya, who I was there the night you met her. Yeah. Um, and so how does I, that go? Let me put it to you. I got another one to put to you. Okay. 
do I strike you as the type of man yes. that would put up yes. with Betty? Betty. Betty. No. You know what I'm talking about. You wrote it oh, up in oh, Paper well, Magazine. Okay, well, anyway, listen, I don't know if that's very personal <laughs> information there. Well, um, you wrote it up in paper when you were Silicon Alley, Mr. Silicon Alley reporter. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, who knows? What, what do you Well, I mean, that was yeah. early in the game. Right. And let, just to let everyone out, Betty X, for argument's mm -hmm. sake, yeah. was, was publicly in Paper Magazine by a reporter, Jason Calcanis, yep. having an affair with my Truman Show girlfriend. I don't think I wrote that. Uh, how much? <laughs> <laughs> On the magazine, we'll see. How much? I don't think I wrote that she was I'll bet you, I Maybe give you five to one out. on a hundred, my last hundred. Been, I think I said they might have been hanging out a lot. I'll bet you five to one on my last hundred. I, listen. You, did, I you said, know, did you know they were having an affair? Yes. Okay. I just said they were hanging For out For argument's sake, you knew. Do I strike you as the type of man okay, that would put up with know. that? I don't know if you would or not. But anyway, the point is, you're trying to say that she was cast in this role. You weren't yes. actually in love with her. Just as Truman's wife was cast in his role. I was very influenced by that film, and in fact, the scene that was most influential. Did this to me, film come? That, when did that film come out? Did it come out before or after this? Before, I believe. Oh, okay. Even if it didn't, it didn't matter. I was yeah. interested in the relationship between the real and right. not real, right. virtually speaking. Right. And the, in particular, the scene where Truman is looking in the wedding album yeah. and he sees his, his Truman Show's wife's fingers crossed at the uh, at the altar. Wow. And the, then you start wondering. Is the wife, well, who is the wife? Because she's getting paid for to be a wife. Is she having connubial relationships with the man, et cetera, Right, et cetera. It, it leads to a very big, like, wait a second. How could you do this to somebody? How could Truman have been raised? It was a sick, sick, demented. Except that it won't be as we go forward. And so you think, and, and Kim Kardashian clearly cast her husband as a basketball player or is casting Kanye as her new and boyfriend or husband or, or baby daddy, who the hell knows. And, and it worked. And she cast herself in the porn video. I suppose that was the porn video was... A la Paris Hilton. A la Paris Hilton. Those were both supposed to be, have le were, were media constructs. They were done on purpose. So for argument's sake, the, there's an audience out there who saw what she did and would like to emulate that. Right. And the, the, what, what I'm proposing with NetBand Command is just that, but not exactly that per se. Mm. The idea that people that that people have a need or are willing to do just that. And you did that. You were in love with, had relations with a woman who you were not in love with, who you cast as your mate. I was never in love with her. No, but she she was the. Was absolute, she in love with you? I. That's what that's what was the nightmare. Because the more she fell in love with me, the more she hated me. Because you weren't actually in love with her. And she sensed because it? Because it, just as Truman sensed it. Well, what kind of person, Josh, just to be frank here for a second, does something like this? It seems a little sick and demented, do you not think? Well, you know... Why did you do it? Okay, let me just say, because, uh, you know, I'm uh, in the context of, of the art form, in the, in, the, in the spectrum of those people that do the kind of art form I do, I'm one of the hardcore guys. I just don't... I don't, there's no, no, no mincing. It's not about, so, it's about the art. It's not about the morality in that context. So you have to do something. That's what you have to do to be the best in the world at what you do. Really? Yeah. Do you think you hurt her in that process? I think that she now, I think we, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was a two way street ergo. Okay. okay. But for argument's sake, so here we go. Did I hurt yeah. her? The question really is. She, she's in a, at that time, if you would have said, if you do all this, you're going to be in a grand jury prize Sundance winning film right. that features you looking really good. Yep. And, uh, now, and uh, Andrew Smith's She recently, wanted to be famous at that time. She wanted to be an internet pop star. She had a show on Sudo. She Sudo, had a show on Tanya Sudo. TV. Tanya TV. Sort of about sex. Yep. She had a not, not that I was getting any of it. Not but, you, you know, were getting the yeah. majority of it. Um, or much of, although I have to say on that NBC clip, if you watch it go forward, yes. it shows us having sex under the covers. Which, so I've had sex on NBC. Was it really sex or was it just... It was just, really sex. Wow. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let's have her find that clip and trim it in. No, I got it. I can just zip ahead. You tell me when to stop. Here we go. Boom, 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 okay. boom. 
Well, you can see it. We're under the covers in, the, in Joseph Munson's Joseph Munson design bed. She is getting dressed. Uh, by the way, while you're doing that, you'll notice that... You look thin, kid. Okay, there you go. That's you guys having sex, yeah, right? No, there. no, no, no. <laughs> there's, there's that. It'll, it'll hit it. Um, you'll notice the, the design I have with the, um, the, the video integrated with the chat. Um, one of the, th one of the, you know, in doing We Live in Public, in do, you know, speaking, uh, whatever. I don't need speaking to now I commercially, I in doing yep. that, one of the things, this is, this is the format that we did uh, cloud casting wise. Mm -hmm. I had big walls, so I would be projecting continuously the, the, vid the, the main screen, which mm -hmm. showed the, the live video feed with the chatters chatting. Right. And so, be, so you literally, they would say something, you'd read what they were saying, and then you could, without doing anything, you could comment back to them. So you'd be just walk around your house, you would see on the projector what they're saying, and just be like, yeah. It was almost like they were in your house with you. They were not only in my house, they in were in my head. Yes. In and you went head. a little crazy from that. Yeah, because Being under that I'll, give you the, I'll tell you where it happened. I can, I'll give you the analogy of where it happened. Um, toward the end, we got into a fight. Mm -hmm. um, she told me to go sleep on the couch, which was completely out of character. Right. And I couldn't understand it. So a half an hour later, my people, the people in my head that were my, my head people. Your chatters. Yeah, well, I will call Why? my head people. Your, your people in your head, right? They told me that her head people told, th told her, gave her the strength to put me up to the couch move. So they pumped her up and said, kick him out. They were in her, think of, they were in her hard drive. They were the virus in her, 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 her uh, they, infected her. they infected her brain. Right. And yeah, that's how it works. They were, it, what, you start losing control of your own, of your individual self. And, and, and when it, ha and. Is that happening now though, when people get so caught up in Twitter that people are, you know, they're talking about their life, whether it's Julia Allison or any of these sort of fame, uh, what do they call them, fame ball people who are just out there so much. Their whole lives are in public. Everything's exposed. Do you think they start living for the audience and living with the audience? Or, or the, the audience, audience is controlling is, them? The already, it's, it's becoming uh, more of a two-way street. W with the net band command, uh, it's just a function of making that a much more efficient highway. So... Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian, the audience is driving them as much as they're driving themselves. Well, when I look at Kim Kardashian or like looking at the TV show Big Brother, right. you have, it's, it's, here's the axiom as we sit here today in 2012, let me give you the pertinent axiom. With broadcasting, which is Kim Kardashian, uh, the, the uh, uh, Big Brother at all, the reality you know, train up to this point, with broadcasting, you get the, the audience watches the network production. With cloud casting, you know, taking advantage, leveraging and taking advantage of the, of the internet, with cloud casting, the network watches the audience. The network watches the audience. So that everyone has an opportunity to try to be Kim Kardashian. Right. Or to, instead of what, a, a million people watching eight people in the Big Brother room, you have a hundred people watching a million people from their home studios. That's the, that's the, that's the, next that's the tectonic shift that we're sitting in right now. And that's what I know how done to, it yet. yes, except that I now believe that I, I, I believe now I have the production, it's just a production technique. Cloud casting, broadcasting, they're all filmmaking, radio programming, net casting, all of that is simply production technique and I, I, I put it all together, it's just a production technique. And I think that that, that, this, that, that production technique know-how is, the, the sweet spot is on Madison Avenue, but more particularly in Hollywood. And I think that the... So how, how does this uh, net band command, as you call it, how does it work? How does it differ than quiet or pseudo? Well, it's, well, what we're doing it's right putting now. those pieces together, really. It's yeah. really putting them all together. But let me give you a yep. working, the, the working model of what I'm proposing is you, are, you have in your house. Mm. You have ADT. Yep. So in ADT, you've got a bunch of guys in a room who are monitoring the perimeter of your house. Yep. And they communicate with you when an event happens, good, Correct. bad, or indifferent. Well, all I'm doing is saying, well, I'm going to 
the idea is to pierce pierce the interior of the house. Right. And then whether it's net band command or or more likely, you know, as we go forward, all the various sponsors and and the programming to uh, really stratify each segment of your daily activity within the domicile. Not even, we're not getting into home, mobile, or off any of that stuff, but just sticking with it with the house. So I go back to my, you know, the future of toothpaste. There's going to be a moment in time, at not too far distant, where, you know, there's going to be a device you put in your mouth that does the oral, or you know, the Crest oral hygiene monitor. Yep. And then, you know, if you're missing, if you're missing a floss or you got a cavity, somebody will pop up on in your in your in you know on your monitor and tell you, you know, the appropriate person crowdsourced all the way up to the top you know, oral surgeon will come in and tell you what to do. That's half of it. The other half is, is at that moment that you're brushing your teeth, the Crest Studios, because Crest will have to have, you know, Crest has got a million people using their product and they have to produce it. The Crest Studios will put the electronic calories that are uh, best suited to your individual identity in front of your eyeballs and ears and senses. And that may be live people or dropped in media or whatever, but very vertical media. And in particular, they're going to connect you in space and time with other people who are like-minded or, or algorithm-minded. So and I'm shaving when with edge gel. You're shaving with edge, edge gel on a Monday morning. Right. Well, let's take toothpaste, because that's you do all times, of, every day, multiple times. Okay. You're, I'm using times of me. But Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Correct. I put Michael Jordan in your toothpaste mirror, and you're into it. I guarantee you, you personally, as Jason Calacanis, are so up for it. So you'll figure out what video, is it just customized video? Or is no, it really Michael teeth? Jordan, or more likely, because of the odds, you're his proxy. A live, interactive human being, or his proxy. Times one 20. to one, or? Times 20, or one to one, depending. More likely, a multiple video chat room. But that's in the Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, Saturday at 2 in the morning when you just got back from partying, not that you or I do that, but when yeah, you get back from now. partying, yeah. um, you're in a totally different mindset and you want John Belushi or, you know, the yeah. real, or, or the modern day variant. And those people are totally different than the guy on Monday morning. Hmm. And Crest's job, or, the, or more likely the agency's job, is to try to find the optimized an algorithm that will connect you in space and time with the, the, the most psychically resonant uh, media that they can. And much m more often than not, it will incorporate live, a live component. How to do that, it, I, I know how to do that right at this point. I know the production process so we're all to get to that point. Screens in our. Well, bathrooms. let's just say for argument's sake, it's Crest and it works. Right. There's a good argument because just the oral hygiene monitor, you can see that's a, that's a done deal. But it works. But if, if all of a sudden now they can piggyback on that, putting in the right people to brush with you and it works, well, you can bet your ass that the shampoo people and the shaving people at all times, let's, we'll call them 100 micro day parts in your home, home events, micro day parts 100 times. There's little teeny things that happen. Each one of those places, a la the minority report, this famous Spielberg scene where he's walking through with contextual ads. Right, and it's saying, hey, Josh, hey, Josh, yeah, hey, all, Josh. Yeah, the computers know how to put you together with, with that. With their retina display. Now, here's what, now we'll go back. Do you think back. users are going to go for that? Will they have enough benefit from it? Of course. If I, I put if Michael Jordan that, in your if I, room. If you told me everybody was going to check in every time they went into a place and say they're here and what they're eating and take a it's picture It's all of automated. It, that would seem like it's crazy 10 yeah. years ago or 20 years ago. Yeah. That what you're saying does sound a little crazy. You realize. No, it sounds very logical. I'm all just it is saying is, to other people. All I'm doing not is. To, I understand to you, you think no, it's I'm logical. I'm optimizing the people that does you want to hang with in the chat room. In the same way that um, Quiet was absolutely out of the mind like you're the people then it was out of their mind like you know you think that people will actually tyler you'll be shaving your head or you're washing shaving your beard I or think brushing you think your that, teeth well, he, and you don't want what, to somebody else here's what he's doing cast you? he's taking what's happening now and e extrapolating it to its end result right well you have chat roulette and you have airtime which are connecting people on their computers when they want to chat, but it doesn't seem to be working. But, they're, but they're not well produced. The core of no, what's happening, well there's, there's this bubble of what's happening, and it's like, let's let that volcano erupt, and what does that look like? Like, take it all the way to the end. Like, what do humans really want? And let's, like, let's bring it. Let's yeah. make it happen. I mean, the king of algorithms is Google. 
Right. And and if you went, if we if we were sitting with Larry Page, if you're out there, this must make sense to you. Yeah, because it's whatever is the most emotional thing that could possibly happen is going to happen. Because that's what's going to drive reaction. If the Knicks are in a playoff, and I put eight basketball stars because because you're Jason Calacanis, the the, and you're, the yeah you're going to want podcasting you're gonna celebrity. It. You and, and so you're worthy to be in with the with former Knicks before the playoff game. Yeah. You're into it, my friend. Of course I am. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the question then, you know, if you're a poor person, you're going to get the duds. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the rich people will get the good guys and the poor people will get, uh, will, won't be able to talk to them so easily. Like you can't really talk to somebody on a call-in radio show. Sort of that same lottery effect. Ah, got it. So we could all be watching Carmelo Anthony brushing his teeth. While we're brushing our but teeth, but more likely it'll be a proxim. Uh, it'll what they'll what the the algor, uh, the prox the, the uh, an approximation of probably somebody that has some match with you, uh, your identity, mm -hmm. psychically by time, all the things that go into the algorithm. What if I'm just not social? I don't feel like I want to talk to anybody at that time. I just skip it. Then they'll figure out something. Then they'll know who you are and know what know that you need to skip it. Ah, interesting. So what you say to break it down, I think. If you look at advertising, it's like Google Glass is a better vision for this. Like, have you seen the Google Glass, Josh? You know, the projecting your eye kind of thing. Yeah, but that's way into the. I can't. I don't know how to produce that. What right. I'm talking about, I know how to. I know how to get to that point, and I know how. To, I know all the the glide paths into that. Hmm. But you, in in essence, you look at the advertising that exists today online, as. Paleolithic in its complexity, and you're taking that same thing and just really, just making it more efficient. Yeah, yeah. To the ultimate I mean, X degree. This isn't even the ultimate X. The X degree is a whole different. Do we have the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the degree in the next twenty years. Brand, no, in the next. I can build the everything I'm talking command about. PDF. No, I know. I mean, you can do it's it today, the, but it's what it's in the same sense. It's where things will probably eventually be. If left to its own devices in 10 years from now. No, I think we're talking zero to three years. Yeah, but you're seeing way Where is ahead. it? No, I'm telling you, that's the time. Whether the crest ends up with mirrors right. in everybody's houses, probably not. But, but the but when connection you, of people in space and time within three when years. When you were doing easy. quiet, in Got your it. mind, how far away did that seem at the time? Now. Right. Yeah, because I did Jupiter. I know all the time. Right. I, you know, okay. I did, so you I did really you think it's really three years out? Zero to anyway. three. I can wow. do this in a year from now. Start if I start production now. A year from now. All right. So what am I looking here? Happen? Um, I don't know. Here on the screen, look. This is NetBank Command oh, of some uh, type. Actually, can you leave this up? Yeah. Um, I'd like to point something out. If you look on the right screen, I did Operator yeah. 11, that, and I did that in the mid 2000s, and yeah. I figured out the platform design, peer to peer, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. with my secret sauce nowadays, which we won't get into. Yeah. But I made a mistake on that right-hand side. That really worked. Those really were, we called it Operator 11. They were operators, and they were communicating. They were the people that if you're at your crest, crest mirror in the future, mm -hmm. that's one of the people you might talk to. Got it. Now, the thing is, um, I made a mistake in the uh, studio uh, design. The U? The U. The pr real problem was is I should have thought about NASA or NBC News, which is on the left-hand side, which Just I call everybody looking at a big. They're focused like in in mission control on opera on uh, Apollo sounds, Twelve. Got it. So they're looking at some projector up top. Yeah, and in fact, the analogy for NetBand Command. Let's stick with Apollo. The Apollo launches mm -hmm. for, or Apollo Thirteen from the movie. Yeah. Just because everybody's seen that. Um, if you think about what happened, you had. Uh, you know, a hundred people in a studio watching and interacting and taking biometrics of eight people in a capsule, correct? Yes. And there was true interaction and they were guiding their lives. Right. Literally. All I'm proposing now with NetBand Command is the modern day commodification of that process so that the people that are sitting in, in mission control aren't just looking at one capsule, they're looking at millions of people's capsules, including bio, eventually biometrics, but definitely including audio, visual, and textual communications. And it's just a production process. It's really, it's, it's fairly straightforward if you know what you're doing. So something like this, where they're at mission control and seeing all the statistics and the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, or what? The, or if you know, in in, in uh, modern day, that you know, in, if if soldiers, a feet are on the ground in Afghanistan, and nothing's going on, the, the master sergeant, the ma sergeant major is looking, you know, monitoring. A fight breaks out, and it goes up five levels. 
So there's a whole hierarchical element to yes. to all of that, and that's part and parcel of of what's missing in in Facebook. Let, let me let me do a parenthetical here. Yeah, I think I know the the true genius of Facebook. Okay, because okay. we were around for six degrees and all the conferences. Friendster, Rise, everything. Yeah, you know why Facebook made it faster? Nope. They followed the uh, the Chairman Mao or the, uh, the Fidel Castro model. They had they had a few thousand hardcore loyalists. In this case, at Harvard University, mm. and that was the, those in the, and they happened to be highly influential. But in that case, but that was the kernel of their army. They started out with a kernel mm. of the army, and I think that was the hmm. that's the genius of Facebook. So, end of parentheses. Is this an art project, or is it a business project, or is it a television project that you see this? And, and can this possibly get off the ground today? Uh, first because of all, I'm seeking operate, venture capital, so it's, it's for business. It's for business. Yes. Not an art project. Not an art project. But you've said pseudo is an art project at times. Pseudo was, pseudo was, look, I was in it to win it. I was, me and Mark Cuban one day were on a conference, on a panel in a conference, and it was, were, it was peers. look, I, yeah, I mean, it was a fake company. Pseudo was a fake company because I, you know, again, I did Jupiter. I knew the numbers. I knew what the bandwidths were and what the market reach was and how many computers with modems. So is this fake there. or is this real this time? Is this totally, it, I'm totally, totally for business. In fact, if you look at the, if you look at my historical, I did Jupiter, I closed from, that was the end of that game. Back to the poker analogy. Yeah. It's just, I'm in a, an extremely long session. Yeah, this is a long game trying to get this to work, isn't it? Yeah, and I and I now have all the pieces together. Uh, one of the key, maybe the most important piece in the puzzle, is the time. We're at the right time for the product. If you look at Facebook, if you, Hollywood took a hard look at Facebook or even YouTube, they're very ill produced. There's no production in Facebook, and YouTube is trying, but the DNA in Silicon Valley is not not designed for production. And Hollywood, Madison Avenue, in my opinion, are the new, it, it, this is where the golden age of, of cloud casting will emerge, not from up there. All of the underpinning technology, all the platforming, all the, all the, the, the low cost of, of cloud, per, cloud distribution, storage, and all that, so that's gonna it's resolved. That. It's resolved. You don't need that. You just they do their thing. It's it you know, they have a long, slow glide down to whatever they're gonna be. But in LA in particular, hmm. this is where the action is. What do you think it's gonna take to start something like this? How many people would be involved? Well, what for is, me, what's, I'm what's I'm, the sort I'm, of uh, minimal viable I'm, product? I'm at a at a million bucks gets me enough to get to uh, the series A, which is five million. But I can I'm pretty confident of that. You, do you want to know the play? Yeah. So the whole idea, again, it's a hierarchical, you have all this hierarchical chat, meaning you have all these chat rooms talking to each mm -hmm. other, but the chat rooms, just like the Afghan soldier, report upward to the set. The set is designed as a cyber ship run by a Captain Kirk, not, much dis not so dissimilar as you is running this, this cyber ship. Yeah. And the whole idea is the, that you're, it's video chat, and the difference between um, uh, the the key thing about the video chat and the platform design is that, uh, as you remember from Operator Eleven, you have you open a session, a director opens a session, the show, it lasts for argument's sake for an hour. In that hour, people are video chatting back and forth, or dragging, dropping, you know, clips in. At the end of the hour, the file closes, and each person gets that recording relationally meaning they can, they can go back to that recording from six months ago, trim it out, and drop it into a new show. But meanwhile, that while they're chatting back and forth in real time, if something interesting happens, and let's say you have a million, a, a million hours a day of, of uh, people chatting back and forth all told, maybe 200,000 people, statistically, you're going to get channel news at nine. Things are going to happen. People, murders, mayhem, rape. So in a way, it's that. like the Big Brother kind of. It's more concept. like it's more like the Truman Show times many because all those signals. If you have a good signal, somebody's somebody's committing suicide or something, you get rewarded for sending the signal up the line. It breaks out virally. 
Well, it, it basically sends the, the elixir, the golden elixir of signals, all the way up to Captain Kirk. So you get a million hours of video, turns into an hour, uh, or a million hours of cloudcast converts to a one hour broadcast Best show. Broadcast Which is show. what YouTube's most popular list is in a way. Except this is done more efficiently, and the idea is well, that... Well, it's pretty efficient on YouTube. But. I, can, um, I can do it more efficiently, easily. Yeah. Easily, yeah. but that one hour is billboarded on what we now, what we've always called it, broadcast television. And people, if people went and had YouTube on their TV, which they're starting to, and they just clicked the button that said "Play the top 25 videos on YouTube today," it would be a pretty interesting, or p p play the top 10. It'd be pretty interesting. It, it what would, you're saying is edit that even more. Well, I'm saying Curate socially it mediate it so that when you watch that show, it's two or three degrees of separation of somebody you, you might be in the show, or people two degrees later are in that show. It's the difference between channel news, broadcast channel news at nine, is that's a geographical footprint, and that's turning into AM, you know, the AM radio. It's still there, but it's not what it once was. It's unnecessary, yeah. Yeah, well, this is a virtual footprint. Mm -hmm. So the, you're psychically connecting people in space and time, distilling the best product, the, the America's funniest videos or whatever it is, or not so funny, mm -hmm. to a one-hour show. You broadcast yep. that on HBO. That billboards, and that helps build the audience both ways. All and right. by the way, the, the ad dollars below the line, below the broadcast, are, are very likely much more valuable than above the line. Uh, you've blown my mind once again. Um, much more to discuss, but hey, let's bring in our friend Mark Scarpa, who was there during all this madness, and I don't know if he's been listening to the show or not. Uh, but come on in, Mark. We'll sit him down. So, um, wow. Crazy. It's like a reunion. It's a crazy reunion. Nice to see you, sir. Go have a seat. You know, Tyler? And it's a chair over there. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have a ton of seats over That's here. That's the corner, we have, We're out of camera angles. That's, That's usually where the news is. Um, you know, no, now you've got your own beautiful <laughs> camera. Radio anyway. <laughs> so we're just sitting here reminiscing. Uh, we went through the whole history. Can I put it to Mark? Uh, is it going to be about Tanya again? Of course. <laughs> you know, for a guy who wasn't in love, you all you really feel I, like the need I to make like, sure everybody knows I feel like, that you were not no, in love. Well, with let's her. ask Scarpa. Scarpa, that you buy this Tanya as Truman uh, Show girlfriend or not, Mark? Yeah, Truman Show girlfriend, one hundred percent. Really, he cast her. That's it. Thank 100%. you. One hundred percent. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so. I saw the emails. Yeah. <laughs> I also knew about. Uh, I guess you were being extorted for money at one point as well. Oh, well, I, have, I have everything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Extorted for money. Yeah, well. so, By the Truman Show girlfriend. Wow. There you Who go. Who knew? Yeah, she felt she should be paid for her services. Novel idea. Well, once she figured out, she, the jig was up. <laughs> paid for services. <laughs> paid for services. Yeah. Rendered. Back to the Truman, Truman's wife. Right. Which you, was the, one of the overarching questions with Truman's wife was... What happens when, when, when the, she was that getting jig paid was up? To be what, so what was she? <clears throat> well, Josh did it yeah. a different way. He didn't pay Tanya to be that. He just well, thought, I did get he her a job at Sudo, which her paid her, fortune. you know, and all that. Interesting. Mm. Um, she was absolutely, I didn't She did the role great. She was perfect for the part. And I, and Mark, I, I was always, I always the, very fond of can her. Can I go to part was. B? Yeah, sure. Mark. Yes. Do you think she regrets a moment of it? Absolutely not. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So, so it, it, if it didn't work out, then I'd be a bad guy. Yeah. Absolutely, but that's the that's the edge. Yeah, and so uh, worth a hundred million. <laughs> Where did it go? Where did it all go? Well, obviously the stock market collapsed. You lost most, most of it of in the it. stock market. Most of it. That's the that's the. You were uh, worth all that on paper. That's, I think that's the uh, the I've I've cried maybe three times. Had a good cry three times in my life, and I, I that was one of them. That there was a day. There was actually, did you know, by the way, just as a, a sidebar yeah. here, you know when they say they call your loan? Yeah. Well, I was with Golden and Sachs. My stock was there. And yeah. like an idiot, I borrowed against the stock. Right, I didn't which, know. But, which is what everybody's doing yeah. against Facebook right now, by the way. Yeah. but I was talking to somebody. They said, in the Valley right now, Goldman and some of these other folks are like biting their nails because they've loaned out billions of dollars to people on Facebook stock. Hmm. And all of the Facebook stock from the insiders comes out later this month in October and in November, and they're scared to death that they're going to have to call all these people for their loans or some portion of their loans, and that will drive the stock down even further. The stock's going to go down to $10. Ooh. And then that will drive even more people to have to liquidate their stock because the people who bought $20 million, $100 million, 
you know, whatever, jets or houses or madness. Uh, just your recommendation to buy it at 25. I think it's a, well, I think if we if we're talking, five, if you have a five or 10 year outlook, yeah. I don't think it's possible. In a worst case scenario, I think the company becomes a $50, million, a $50 billion company. And right now it's trading right at about that or less. So I don't think there's much downside risk in buying or, at anywhere from 20 to 25. And if you're buying at 10 to 15, I think it's a lot of upside. I'm bearish. I don't agree. I think that there's the MySpace factor. Very po uh, just based on it's my possible. Feeling. It's uh, that's absolutely possible. But I think their ad network alone, and if they just charge for Facebook Connect. So if you're a website, just to charge for authentication, if they just charge every website that uses Facebook Connect a small <coughs> fee, under ten thousand users, it's free yeah. a month. Over a hundred thousand users, it's a thousand dollars a month. Over a million users, it's ten thousand a month. Those people would easily pay. Facebook Connect is so valuable to I companies. would totally concur. Yeah. I, I, think, I think there's no comparison between Facebook and MySpace. One big difference is MySpace was acquired by News Corp, which in essence killed the company. Uh, and and they were in a technology. Hey, by the way, I didn't even introduce Mark Scarpa yeah. is uh, somebody who was at Silicon Alley, did some of the first um, webcasts, cybercasts, Tibetan Freedom Concert, et cetera, and uh, has been doing webcasting basically, along with Josh, just created the category. Can I, uh, Mark, I can't remember the name. You did a really beautiful uh, virtual reality show at Pseudo, kind of mid-1990s somewhere. Yeah. What, what, it was, what, what was the, Madonna? How, how was it entitled? We called it Overstimulation. Overstimulation. Right. Yeah. It was a two-day virtual reality immersive experience. Wow. And your loft. Yeah. What, what, what did you do? Well, I ran to it, I think. Yeah, you were there. We yeah. had, uh, we had, I think eight different types of VR pods that right. came in from all across the country and the world. Yeah. We had uh, Feed.com uh, was one of our folks there. Yeah. We had uh, elect um, EBN, yeah. EBN, yeah, right. Emergency Broadcast. Broadcast Network performed. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of and different. They had a lot of really good install. They were just the. It was a good <coughs> layout and, and and you know, uh, curation of installation. Yeah, that's really the first time it. we collaborated actually. Yeah. And then it went on to the radio show and then streaming. Yeah. So what do you think about his ideas around net band? Possible? Too far ahead? Just right? I think it's already happening. Mm -hmm. I think that um, Josh's spin on it is right, because what he's concerned about is telling stories and allowing people to share stories and get access to stories. And you know, we've all seen platforms come and go over the years, going back to 95, 96. But platforms are lacking storytelling. And as more producers get involved that want to use these different tools to tell stories, then it's a real revolution. And you can do it for a lot of transformational ideologies and transformational good. Um, you've got companies like Uvu that are, in essence, pretty much the platform that Josh is talking about in some regards. And they've already got 54 million users. Uvu? Uvu, yeah. But, but you'll notice what Mark, uh, just so we're clear, yeah. I know Uvu. But just the vernacular that you use, I, I, the problem with Ubu is very similar to Facebook. They're users, they're not audience. That's right. They're users, they're not an audience. I, I, I personally feel like the, the term viewer is dead. I like the word participant. To me, it's all about participation. And the audience should be respected more so as not just a consumer, but also a participant and a contributor to the creation of the content itself. And that's what you're talking about. And uh, philosophically, yeah, yeah. agree. There's another company that you should look at called OnCam that uh, is basically powering Vivo right now in this uh, multi-tiered video chat environment. Um, it's not called Chatterspace, or is it? It used to be called Chatterspace. They yeah. just changed the name. Got it. So, Great group of so guys. So basically, in my dream scenario, Mm. I cut a deal with, I actually work with the William Morris Agency, Mark Geiger, your old friend Mark Geiger. Our old friend, old Mark, friend Mark, Geiger, Mark Geiger, yes. Good man. Um, my dream scenario is, for argument's sake, is to get a uh, HBO 9, one of their off channels to start with. Right. A stripped show, one hour a night, mm -hmm. and uh, take the distillation of the best video chat, which I believe I can produce very well, the best video chat of the night, sort of like a news report, and billboard it there, use that to sort of uh, help the existing audience validate their existence, Yeah, because they're on HBO, it, and then have a, have a, a self-reflective process where, um, that enables me to grow that audience. It's crowdsourced, curated content. You just need to have context within each show. 
Um, you look at something like Funny or Die that has an HBO deal right now. So the idea of taking assets from the web or the internet and creating all media properties is very timely, and it's something that's absolutely happening. My main, my my one of my main uh, top lines to the television folks is simply that in a, in that one hour on HBO as a strip show, I can generate a million hours of cloud casting video inventory, which which via crowdsourcing and at the very tip top professional uh, television Based, people. Yeah condense that into a one hour show. And the idea is that I'm working at a one million to one ratio for, in a, for a newscast. Sure. Which in comparison to even network newscasting, which at best is doing 200 to one, statistically, by just bare numbers, the product will be far superior. That's that's one of my my key arguments. Why, what do you think, Mark? To hold water? Well, it's hard to, it, to it's kind of uh, switch between the the analogy that you're making. I think is is probably a lot for most of these executives to well, to, I'm asking to take you. in. I'm asking you. For me, I think it's fine because you know you have an exponential amount of, in essence, content contributors out there as long as you can reach them. Um, you know, so I have a production technique, a pr production process that will, in a hierarchically or orderly fashion, distill the best of. Sure. Sort of operator 11 with three degrees later. You just need associate For, producers skimming through all that content. No, it needs to be- By crowdsource. It, yeah, it's crowdsourced, but it has to be curated in some way. At and the very top, you do, the curation yeah. happens generally at the very top, and the, fundam the other com fundamental piece of that yeah. is you need a sound stage. Can you pull up my uh, net band? I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, the, the, you, need, you need a sound stage that's able to receive those signals. And part of the gameplay of the NetBand command is that the people on the sound stage aren't actors. They're actually Producers. audience members. No, they're well, audience members do that too. who have earned their way to set very comparable to a million YouTube views. Sure. So that when they finally get to set, they're really, they're really representing a constituency of people that have, have led them to be there. Voted them up. And those people that got there, by the way, going back to the very beginning of, of the quiet installation. Sure. Well, quiet, they've got, to, they've got you know, to get them there. You've got to fly them in. They've got to stay there for a period of time. Well, that's quiet. They have places, capsule hotel, wired capsule hotels. You sell the and mm -hmm. They eat, you sell food. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. That's eight hours a day. For the other 16 hours, all the people in that net band command are really doing is watching and interacting with audience members, both on set, but more often out in the ether, out in the club. That's that's the game. It's it's an interesting game. I mean, it's analogous to in terms of the hierarchy and the fact that they earn the right to be there. It's very analogous to say a maker studio model, right? So in order to become a part of the maker studio family, for example, you need to have a certain amount of followers and viewers within the YouTube community. Community, you build that up on your own, and then eventually you get to a point where you're part of a creative community that will support your creative endeavors, and subsequently you can generate more revenue and become more well-known and famous. Yes, except I think, I think what I'm proposing and you're is doing the it. Hollywood version. Well, they are very Hollywood, quote unquote, but what you're talking about is a live version, which is quite different yeah, because than... because the video, video chat is predominantly a live medium, even though you're dragging and dropping clips in, sure. as Jason has been doing contextually right. within this show. What about using these existing platforms like Uvu or OnCam? Well, the cost of building, first of all, I, always, I like having complete control of my technology. <clears throat> the cost of development, uh, because the platforms are, are so sophisticated, is de minimis. It's m much more important to have control of your platform. Because, for example, to get to set, you have is, there's a currency involved. There's a massive, massively multiplaying on online gaming element. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a currency involved, and you have to have a currency element. So I could. So I people could, could be buying things. Well, they, you, you know, well, oh, for one, for example, if one of the things that happens when you have control of the platform, or when you have an audience out there, mm -hmm. and they're trying to get to set, the focalization of getting to set is you can get them to work in unison, and that's not 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 so, that's important because, for example, if you have a if you're an audience member and you have a lot of money in your bank, and you have a pothole in front of your house. 
and you're willing to spend the dough, you can get a, a thousand people to, to uh, hassle your local mayor with a, however they do it, video mails, et cetera, et cetera. It's already happening. Yeah, yeah. It's, sort of, it's sort of crowd pressuring them. Yeah. Well, to do that... They call it a uh, human flesh search in China. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which Except is we're cyber find, fleshing it. Yeah, it doesn't mean flesh in any kind of mm. uh, sexual way. It means just find out all the human aspects to a person. That's right. Their secrets and everything. So when that guy was... Some official was so, seen like sort of smiling at... Um, our, he was like some administrator, and he went to some wreck of a train, and he's sitting there smiling, laughing, looking at, at the train wreck. And they, somebody caught that picture, and they're like, who is this person? And they just did, like, almost like the Reddit or community or anonymous. They put him in inter their, a virtual interrogation room? They did a virtual interrogation. And now he and lives found in out, public. And they found pictures of him with watches that were very expensive. Yeah. And then they Yale, said, how they does this guy it? have all these wa expensive watches on a salary? Then they kept going, and then they found out his girlfriend, and they found his mistress, and they found his other mistress. They mm -hmm. found his you know, who was paying him off, and then he loses his job, and then he goes to jail. So now, if I was that guy, mm. if I was that guy at the train station, yeah. and I had a lot of money in my, in my net band uh, command account, I would deploy a counter, countermeasures against the people that were, that were trying to take me down. Right. And that costs money. My brain is fried. I can't take it anymore. Okay. <laughs> it's too insane for me. I can't keep all this in my head at one time. Listen, this has been a fascinating um, discussion. You know, it's interesting when I talk to you, Josh, I sort of fade in and out of moments, and this has historically been the case for two decades, fade in and out of moments of absolutely understanding exactly what you're saying, then not understanding it, and then understanding it later. Uh, whether that later is later that evening, later that month, or later that decade. Um, and I tr truly believe you're one of the um, pioneers of the space. I owe a lot to you uh, for giving me a lot of opportunities, and I appreciate that, and a lot of mentoring over the years. You're a true visionary and a friend, and I, I think that you really have, uh, you're onto something, and I think you're gonna have great success with it, so. Thanks. If people need to get in touch with you, the best way to do that is? M-J-L-U-V-V-Y at Gmail. That's it. And by the way, I've pulled or the Or email me and I'll do an intro. I've pulled the arrows out of my back. Yes. I'm now a settler. Wow. Pull the arrows out of his back, and he's now a settler. There you go, jo from Josh Harris. Uh, <laughs> he's now a settler. <laughs> That's great. He took the arrows. He went up the hill and took the arrows, and, and now he's okay. Uh, well, you've always been okay in my book, and uh, what an amazing life. Uh, we all should be so lucky to uh, have done what you've done. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big shadow you cast. I mean, everything I'm doing here at this weekend is a direct rip off of what you did. The launch conference, TechCrunch 50, all started, uh, you know, watching you do the Jupiter events. I don't think and anyone in this room is a slouch. Well, well, Tyler's here. You got to keep, keep in mind Tyler's here. Well, no, Tyler's a man. Well, I'm all right, Tyler, you have anything to say? I mean, you watched the movie. I mean, I just did this great wrap up, but I, you always like to interrupt anyway, so I figured I'll let you. You're gonna let me interrupt. Now? I'm gonna let you interrupt now. It's like, um, is it, what is it like, a valet in the desert? Go ahead. No, I mean, <laughs> Josh, is, Josh is his own insight. Giving a, giving a nun roses. Go ahead. No, no, Josh <laughs> is a, an axiom insight in, him, in himself. Go. Yeah. Um, no, it's. It's amazing to kind of see things through Josh's eyes as it, as to me, it seems he's right. I, I love the idea of where does this really all lead, right? Mm. The emotions of people and what's driving us at the end of the day and where is this going to go? Right. When, when the you, accelerant of technology when you and take out, when, you, when you take out the frictions and you apply lubricant in the form of technology to the all the way. The base what? instinct of humans. What yeah, happens? where is this all going? And where does it go off yes, the rails? Yes. And where does it lead us to great places? But so, Well, then let me conclude on one note. Go ahead. As I explained up at the top, yeah. you have a thousand, a hundred microbe day parts in a day. Yeah. Well, what happens, what drove me crazy from living in public truly was that I had a psychic fracture because my, I hadn't been conditioned to have these micro day parts in my life. And when I had the psychic fracture, I entered the hive. Mm. That's how it's going to happen. People enter the hive of all the other people being There's there. There's no you and you anymore. You're just a collection of those, those micro day parts. There's no indi individuality ceases to be, make sense in, modern, in the modern world. And that's where technology touches on spirituality and yeah. all that's wild. Wow. I, I'd like to say evolution, and yeah, yeah. maybe I'll, let me one more. Well, I mean, one, it's yeah. it's not evolution in the case of biology. It's evolution in the case of technobiology because our biology is obviously outdated, and our DNA is way outdated, and our DNA has to catch up with the technology. You know what's really cool about all of this? What's that? 
just like when we came down from the trees or we learned how to use a tool or a wheel, yep. all four of us yep. are going to be present when all this happens. Yeah, we're going to, hopefully, knock on wood, we will yeah. be here when it happens. <laughs> all right, this, uh, thanks, Mark, for coming in and sharing a few thoughts. Thanks. Um, I had a final thought. Oh, yeah, go ahead. If George Orwell had a muse, it would be Josh Harris. Ah, hey. there you go. Oh, wow. I'm in. Awesome. I like that. That's another mind-blowing one. Hey, listen, thank you so much for tuning in to this very special episode of This Week in Startups, and we'll see you all next time. <clears throat> Bye-bye.